Well, it looks like the wind blew a lot of the snow off, thankfully. Um, got about, oh, I don't know, maybe close to a foot of snow. I don't even know. I didn't even look at the totals. Up here on our shuttle wagon. Might have to get the snow scraper out and see what I'm doing. These things are pretty cool. It's like a miniature train. Let's go ahead and go inside. Snowy. Okay. Let's start this bad girl up. Okay. I'll have to let this run a little bit because one, it's got a build up air for this alarm to go off. And we've got engine coolant alarm. Let's well, see here. Engine coolant alarm, preventative maintenance, low air, and preventive maintenance. What kind of maintenance? Here, let's get this started. We are currently sitting at. Uh, 1,062 hours total. So, yeah, look at that. Almost half of it's been idle hours. That's what's really bad on these uh, Tier 4 emission systems is idle timing. Kills the DPFs and SCRs, lots of extra regens, acid accumulations unnecessarily, blah, 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 that kind of stuff. So here we are inside the shuttle wagon. Let's go for a ride. Steering's still a bit cold. So this thing is a wide turner. It has a very, very narrow wheelbase. And, uh, out here in the slick conditions. This is a slight downhill grade. I don't want to get too wild with speed. We'll make a six point turn if we have to. We might get it in a three point just fine. We'll go in the neutral and reverse. Start turning the other way. Come on, baby. Gotta see behind us, maybe. We're gonna make this turn just fine. Got a nice 360 view camera, it's kinda cool. So it basically blends four cameras on all sides together. It's a very narrow, like, fisheye look. And then they have just the superimposed shuttle wagon, so you get a little bit of a, a concept of where you're at. But uh, down in that mirror, you can see our rail wheel. That's how they kind of line themselves up to get on the rails. Just by visual. They do have a, another camera view above, like, one of the rear wheels. But as you can see, I mean, you can't really... very hard to tell where you're at so a lot of it's just estimating so this is how wide we're wide we are but the wheel is like basically physically underneath where I'm at and then if I look at that other mirror I kind of estimate that's where the other wheel is I'm just trying to avoid our building here we're a long ways away 
So, anyways, we'll uh, see you inside. All right, so we got this beast in here. I had to actually air down the tires to get it to fit in. It was very, very tight and got all washed off. That thing was a slip hazard, like you wouldn't believe. Um, anyways, so this is has a this has a rear wheel. That's a tongue twister rail wheel. Um, cylinder that basically will put pressure down or relieve pressure and allow X amount of weight from the tire to sit down and um, make the tractive effort but these rail wheels are uh, what actually keep it on the track. The problem is is that these cylinders are drifting down prematurely and if you don't think about it uh, you'll have to um, lift them up or you know, risk damaging them if you're off the rails. Alright, so, wheels chopped. I am going underneath here so I can cap off those lines to that cylinder. Got her locked out, tagged out, so we don't die. And here we go. Alright, bleeding like an alien, but you can see here that. Let's tighten this down. So, it's not actively leaking right now. We'll go ahead and crack that loose. And you'll see it's actively bleeding. And it's fairly under pressure yet, but that's because when you suck the cylinders up, it actually has positive pressure that way. So that's why there's pressure on this side. We just gotta bleed that off. So that way we don't get hurt. Once that quits bleeding, It'll be relieved of pressure because I have a jack underneath it holding it right now. So once this bleeds off, it's upward pressure. We'll be good to go. There we go. And it's finger tight now instead of being tight. One thing with hydraulics is you always want to be aware of when you can't unthread it. That means there's a lot more pressure under the, underneath there than you realize. So what I'm gonna do is take these lines off and see if it's the control valve. See if it's the control valve or the cylinder. What you do is, is you relieve the pressure with the jack and we will cap both sides of the cylinder Doing this one handed. But we'll cap both sides and then we'll see if it drifts on its own. If it drifts on its own, it's the cylinders. Basically, uh, the piston that slides up and down inside here, the seals in them is allowing fluid to transfer from this side that is holding it back to the other side and allowing the rod to come out and fall. So yeah, we'll get those tightened up, relief the jack, see what it does. All right, so we got the cylinders capped off. Let me just kind of put the plugs in the lines, don't make a big mess. Now, oh, the important part, that's where the cylinder's starting out at, just a little bit of chrome showing. And we don't want them to drift, they should be locked. So hydraulic oil can't go anywhere. We'll lower the jack. Okay, jack is down. I'm gonna leave it there just in case it drifts so I can help get it back up. But we'll wait. It was, uh, oh, 15 minutes for it to fall all the way down. So we'll check back here in about 15 minutes. See if she falls all the way to the ground. So it's been about 30 minutes and not supported, hasn't fallen an inch. The other side, I put uh, the lines back on, clearly a difference. So I'm going to go ahead and put these lines back on, um, let it come all the way back to the ground and then there's a... After looking at this part right here, this is actually a flow divider that equals the pressure out between all the rail wheels. Um, 
I was looking for a check valve, which I found up in the main control valve uh, that I ended up taking out, inspecting, didn't find anything wrong with it. Uh, so I went ahead and ordered the check valve since the rail wheels don't fail. That leaves the check valve.